Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. I am Lou Mangiello. You are my friend. It is Wednesday night, and I am super excited to see... Well, I don't see you, but super excited to see you that you're here virtually with me in the four corners of my office. If you are joining us live, welcome. Pull up a chair. Get comfy. Get a little blanket on. It's hot out. Forget the blanket. Just go grab a snack and invite your friends to join us. If you're not joining us live... Come back every Wednesday night right here at 7.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, I am super excited tonight. I don't know why. I know why, because it's Wednesday, and I love seeing you guys. I love seeing so many of you familiar faces in the box. i got to put my old man glasses on. John Jones, I hope you are doing well, brother. Uh, thank you for all the messages. Uh, Michael, Marie, Barb, Cody, Linda Lammers. Linda Lammers. I miss Linda Lammers. I love, Lin- I love Linda Lammers. That should be on a T-shirt. Uh, John Hand. Good to see you too, brother. I'm looking forward to seeing you again and uh, catching up with you. Erica, Amy Rivard Peterson, it is neither cool nor breezy. I don't know what part of Florida you're living in, Lisa Denoto Glasner, but it is neither cool nor breezy. It's hot, like Africa on the sun in hell hot. Uh, Danny, what's going on? Amanda Catherine LeCicero, Mike, I thought they said Mike Wazowski. It's close enough. Katie Kuhn, who doesn't miss Linda? We need more. First of all, we all miss Linda. We need more cruises, and I expect to see you in Japan. That's all I have to say. So many good snacks. So, speaking of Japan, by the way, I'm going to uh, instantly seg- segue to this week's um, top ten shopping experiences in Walt Disney World. I'm turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really think so because I went all kinds of, spoiler alert, love on Mitsukoshi Department Store. And uh, Tim asked me to bring a little bit. He, he prefaced that part by saying that we've covered it in detail. I, I brought a little bit more to the table in terms of the Japanese service culture and then Japanese traditions in terms of gift giving. Gift giving and speaking, and uh, even expectations and how that ties into not just Mitsukoshi, but my surprise entry on uh, on this week's show in terms of uh, a shop that I didn't expect to add on, but I did at the end because I dig it a lot. I actually think this shirt is from that shop. Stephanie Perry Bullock, I miss you so, so very, very much. Uh, Katie Tolson, love this week's show. Linda can't do Japan. I will eat uh, enough for us both. Um, I hope I have good AC. Don't, I'm not even going to jinx it. I need to go clean out my AC unit before this weekend. Shopping is your sport. Terry Sinton Darty, nice to see you as well. Andrew Klein digs the Fort Wilderness Trading Post. Meg nods, and how did I know that you're going to be all over that with me in Japan? Uh, Andrew Klein, I agree about Fort Wilderness. I dig the place, the food, the atmosphere, and the food, and the trading post. It's just so far away. You got to like drive there, and they get on a bus to get on a scooter to get on it. But it's definitely worth the uh, the wait and the drive. Edward Strine getting right to the heart of the matter. Which restaurant is better, Sana or Jiko? I think it depends on what you're going for. Uh, I think if you want a nice borderline fancy-ish upscale meal. Jiko is your play. If you are a wine drinker, they have one of the largest collections of South African wines um, anywhere, like not just in the area, but I think like anywhere. Um, They have some except... God, it's been a long time, but they have a, a braised short rib, which is phenomenal. That being said, I do dig me some Sanaa, something fierce. Go for the bread service, Stay for the bread service. Um, Jason Saunders, bread service, please. I am with you. Cody Pierce, again, re- reaching right into and tugging at my heartstrings. Food and wine is so close. I can already smell the delicious goodies. Um, raise your hand. Give me a heart. Give me a thumbs up if you happen to see. Did I post both videos? I posted two videos from my little sneak peek at the food and wine I have a third one I have to post, too, with me and the chef. Um, If you saw either of those videos, give me a thumbs up. Better yet, I'd appreciate it if you liked them. Forget liking it. Just share it. The more that we can bring into the fold, the better. Uh, The first video was... What was the first video about? I have no recollection of what the first video was about. Do I? I know. One, it's been a long week, and it's only Wednesday. Um, One of them, I do... Try my hands and surgical gloves at making the active eats. What are they called? Active eats energy ball bite things. 
energy ball bites, something like that. Um, and uh, Julie, I'm not sure if you're in here. Thank you for videotaping and keeping the camera rolling the entire time. Uh, note to self, don't stick the whole thing in your mouth at once. It is meant to be bitten and not done anyway. Um, I did like that one thing. I didn't. Oh, no, Stacy, I loved it. I just put too much in my mouth, which was my own fault. I Take small bites, kids. Kids, take small bites. Don't stick the whole thing in your mouth. And what was the other video that I did? I have no recollection. Oh, no. I take that back. That's a complete and utter lie. I'm taking the glasses off for effect. The Four River Smokehouse food truck. Oh, coming to Disney Springs, August 21st. First, they have a taco. It's literally like it's in a cone that big. It's like $9. I am down like Chinatown all over that. August 21st. Somebody put that on the calendar. I need to go to Disney Springs just for that. So... Uh, two videos, one more to come, and I still have some more Pixar Pier videos coming as well. By the way, somebody remind me about Pixar Pier because I have a special new, I'm testing something, a new contest just for you tonight so you can win that prize package right down there. So um, I was smoke, I was hugging the smokehouse chef, and I had no problem with that. He didn't either, which was fine or weird. But he is John Rivers, the founder of Four Rivers. And if you are an Orlando local or if you've been down here and heard of it before, it's worth going off property for. The food is so good. How good is it? The food is so good, they don't even give you plates. They just give you trays with wax paper on it, and they slap the meat right on it, and it's absolutely worth it. And it's phenomenal, unless you're not a meat eater. Then just get the mac and cheese so hey kevin harrington it is so nice to see you i did get your email today i will get back to you asap uh steve thank you very much for the congrats on the people article i have another one that i submitted um it should be it should be running in the next couple of weeks and obviously it's food related i'm a giver i'm a giver i do the research for them I don't, you think I want to do that? You think I want to be, go, what was, I don't even know what the other one's about. Oh, yes, I do. That's a lie. But it's also food related. Uh, John Rivers is not the same guy. I don't believe he's a DJ, but I also was a DJ, so you never know. There's a little bit of DJ maybe hiding in all of us. Did that come out right? Probably not. Didn't matter. Um, let's see. The box just Got more brill. I can see why, because Martin Shergold from those United Kingdoms just hopped in. By the way, Martin, I gotta, am I allowed to say this? I think I can. If not, it doesn't matter. I'm going to uh, I'm going to say it anyway. I cannot wait to see you. Oh, my God, the fun we are going to have in Japan next year. I, like brains falling out of our head, the food, the friendship, the fun, and the food in Japan. And if you didn't know of my love of Japan before, Listen to this this week's episode. We still have, I think now we're down to four spots left for our Adventures by Disney to Japan. If you are at all even curious, this is the I believe this is the only Adventures by Disney to Japan that is still available. So uh, please go to www.com slash Japan19 to check it out and see. And uh, I, I understand it. there is a, um, it is not the cheapest trip in the world. But then is any trip to Disney? No, but it's worth it. And that's what we know. Oh, my God, I can't wait for Japan. Like, it's good, crazy how good this is going to be. And, oh, surprises we have planned and all that kind of stuff. Armando Reynal, it's so good to see you, brother. And now, just so you know, that thing that you gave me has my wheels spinning to do something like that in the next couple of years. That thing that I wore last night on our call, you know where I'm going with that. So... <laughs> Lisa says, I'm just going to spend that whole week at Mitsukoshi, which is just like being in Japan. It's as close you can, as you can get to Japan without actually being there. But I will I will go live as often as I can. I will bring a dumpling for you, dumpling. <laughs> I just missed it. Uh, Maria Wyatt, I'll, I will bring, well, that's a lie um, because they don't travel well. And even if they did travel well, I would probably eat them before they got home. This body happened because primarily of dumplings when I went to China last year. Uh, but I cannot wait to. Um, and now I want Morimoto. Now I want to go to Morimoto. And I can't wait to see you on Tuesday, Friday, whatever it's going to be. Something like that. Um, Felicia, nice to see you. Alessandra Kelly, Japan is going to be incredible. I cannot. Uh, 
I cannot wait. I am going to eat all the dumplings. And Maria, I don't know if you've ever been to Asia, but they have dumplings morning, noon, like breakfast dumplings are phenomenal. And I've been to, when I went to China last year, the, like the breakfast buffet had like American stuff and they had like all kinds of um, uh, Indian food and what, and then they had a whole section of Asian stuff and like four different types of dumplings that changed every single day. I can't wait. There's nothing wrong with dumplings for breakfast and fried rice because hi, Asia. So Melanie Jones, you're right. Animal Kingdom is so far away, but I'm now also thinking about bread service. And if somebody could pick me up, I would actually almost be down for it tonight. And, um, and I would treat to chicken guy. That's it. Tuesday at chicken guy. I am going to wear, I will, I will. I think I'm going to wear stretchy shorts to chicken guy on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, I will tell you, Maria, every time I've walked by the last few times I've been in Disney Springs, the line out the door. So chicken guy has got to be doing something right. I will be uh, I will be primed and ready. And by primed and ready, I mean I'm not going to have any breakfast or lunch. I'm going straight to chicken guy. I'm not I'm not passing go right to chicken guy. And maybe just maybe Tuesday I'll go live from the chicken guy um, and all the chicken. So Mackenzie Hagen Butcher Hagen Hagen Butcher. How, Mackenzie loves to, who doesn't love dumplings? How could you not? They're little warm, soft, like packages of of tender, loving ingredients. And if you haven't seen Bao, the short before, um, oh God, what's the? <laughs> it's funny that I remember the short before the Pixar, before Incredibles. Uh, I remember the short more than I remember the movie. So. Hagen Butcher. Hagen Hug ha, <clears throat> I'll get in. Um be careful what you wish for, Mangello. Somebody to pick me up and take me for bread service. Terry Simpson Doherty, it's funny because when I said that, you were actually the first person that crossed my mind. I expected to see your car and costume rolling up on my house um any second now. So uh crazy people don't love dumplings. There's so much that I can say to that and I just I, I just won't um, Ricky DJ Technoid Reed I love you brother you're interested to see what my take on all the sauces are um, I love me some sauces so I am uh, I am definitely curious to sort of go through because there's, there's a lot Maria do you know how many are there like 20 sauces so I'm curious to sort of go through the um, the litany of sauces. And spoiler alert, I have a new video coming up possibly this week or early next week, speaking of sauces, of um, some things that I tried when I was out in Pixar Pier, by the way. And I might have a Pixar Pier giveaway next week, too. So I think everybody remembers Bow more... Uh, Julie, it's only because I'm always hungry when I go to the movies. I loved Incredibles too. Don't get me wrong, but I loved, loved, loved Bao a lot because I love dumplings. Twenty-two sauces. Wait, wait, hold on. I, I it's going by too fast. Twenty-two sauces. My favorite is Nashville Honey Hot. Interesting. Interesting. I. Uh, I'm down. I'm down. I'm excited. I'm excited for chicken. Because that's all I've got is chicken and sauces, and that's right in my wheelhouse. Yeah, I just gonna need a place for a nap when I am done. So, um, let's see. Let me catch up here. Amber Bramble, whose name I just like saying, says bread service and zebra domes. If you do bread service right, Amber Bramble, there's no room for zebra domes. Like that's my dessert. Uh, and if you go back and listen to show number four. 78 somewhere around there somebody link it up here uh we did our late night dining review of the sanaa lounge you will get a sense of just how much i dig that restaurant so uh erin van quill wants to know what's the hottest sauce they have she's gonna need to try it are you that are you that girl like you dig your stuff like super hot like you like korean hot barbecue and ghost pepper like melt your face off hot it's got to um, it still has to taste good. You don't want a, a heat that's going to overpower your chimichanga, your ramen, your sushi, or your chicken. 
So I'm uh, I'm curious to to see uh, what they have there. John Delante, it is good to see you, brother, as well. Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Um, I could do Sanaa bread service for dessert all day, every day. Joseph Britton, Britton? Joseph, oh, oh, I was going to say we just bonded, but I just saw your avatar that has an Eagles logo, so I have to get rid of it. So we bonded. It lasted like half a second, like a click, and it was done. So, um Joe Riley, good to see you. Justin Ludby says, no such thing as too hot. So, Justin, how hot up the scale have you gone? Have you gone, like, ghost pepper hot? What's the other one? There's a new one that, that's got a higher rating on the Scoville heat scale. Um, I don't even know what it's called. Did I try the chicken place at Pixar Pier? And if so, did I like? Did I try the chicken place at Pixar Pier? Do I look like an... Why did I even go out there? Do you think that I did not go? Spoiler alert. There's a video coming with all of the food being. I will tell you, I love the chicken place. I love the chicken place, not just because the chicken is moist and delicious and not fried. I don't know what sort of sorcery they do, but it's so well. Even the 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 delivery mechanism that you get your chicken in is themed. Um, it was phenomenal. I loved it. Uh, I just wish I had more time and more appetite because I ate everything. On, I'm not kidding. I ate everything in, on Pixar Pier within the matter of like two hours. And I've got the video to prove it. I have to look at that video to make sure not everything that we recorded actually made it onto the video, though. So, Carolina Reed was the hottest. Yeah, but there's a new one. I don't know what the new one is called. Um, yeah, it, Brian, it's hotter than the Carolina people. Carolina Peeper? That sounds creepier than it should. It's hotter than the Carolina Reaper. It's sort of just like the new fangled, you know, um, uh, quirky thing to try. Justin says, ghost pepper, it's it's about the flavor, not the heat. Um, I, I agree, but sometimes they're a little bit too much. Um, Martin says, do I have your English tea tin out? Yes, it's right. Wait. It's right there, right next to the hangry sign where it belongs. So I love my English tea and Martin Shergold. So I love, um, who am I kidding? I just like getting food sent to me in the mail. Other people think it's weird. I think it's kind of awesome. So, yeah. So John Delancey remembers some new pepper thingy. <laughs> so, uh, and John, oh, John, I got your, your request today. I was out all day. Um, I, we'll we'll make it happen tomorrow. We'll get on a call tomorrow. So um, John is doing some really good stuff over at the Story Driven Business Podcast. If you like Disney, and obviously you do because you're here, and you have an interest in business and entrepreneurship, he marries those two things. Go give him some love. He just started his new podcast over at Story Driven Business Podcast. Kristen Furman Simmons, how was the food and wine? Film, how was the food and wine preview? A, it was awesome. B, the only it was just one thing. That was missing. It was Kristen Furman Simmons. That's what was missing from the food and wine preview. I cannot wait to see you in, I don't want to say how long it's going to be because I'm going to freak out that I'm not ready yet, but what is that vibrating thingy on top of the bookcase? Oh, it's not a vibrating thingy. So wait, you're seeing the ceiling fan and that is a sign that says, what if? That was one of the giveaways I gave to those who came to um, the momentum retreat in whatever month it was, June, somewhere, somewhere back then. So pepper X chocolate Bhutan, uh, Melanie Jones loves John pot, loves John's podcast. Um, four year old can't understand. He's going to see Lou next week, but he thinks it's at our house. It's kind of, it's, it's close enough. Is, is it really, wait, it's next week, isn't it? I, well, I got a lot of work to do. I have I have two presentations that I have to write in like six days and I got to go. I got a lot of work to do. And, and the more we're talking about it, the more I'm starting to, uh, to freak out about it. So, um, so Matt Gugier, guy gear, Matt says that going to the Halloween party on the 24th, looking forward to seven great days with 22, 22 family members. Ouch. I mean, yay. Am I going early to the Halloween show? So as a matter of fact, and I meant to create a graphic for tonight, uh, I am going on Friday to Mickey's 
not so scary, incredibly hot Halloween party. I'm going to be there Friday. They're doing a media preview, um, so I was invited to go and check it out. It's hard to get into the full blown Halloween spirit because it is um, still so hot out. However, I love that event. Um, I'll probably end up going again at some point when I, I can actually put on a uh, some sort of a costume. Lou, I can wing it in Indy. Thank you, Aaron. I will actually take that as as full advisement and uh, and do that a little bit. I uh, listen. I'll come prepared. Don't worry. Um, let's see. Let's see. How busy am I going to be in March? John C. Jones. I don't know how busy I'm going to be next week. My calendar changes um, uh, very very quickly. Scott Otis is going to not one, but two Halloween parties in August. Um, it just doesn't seem right that they are so early. I agree. I absolutely agree wholeheartedly. Um, let's see. Karen Musgrove, it is nice to see you. I could just play the grease tape at Indy. The only time the grease tape might actually get shown is at my wake. Like that'll give, it'll distract you from the fact that I'm actually dead to, to give me you something to laugh at. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> I'm looking for the Spidey Turvis. This was actually a gift. So I don't, I'm actually, sometimes I hate using it because I'm afraid I'm going to like wear it out. But these things are, um, they're awesome. I, I don't know. I don't know where you can get it. I almost was going to say you might be able to get that at that dark place down the street, but I don't even know if they sell that there. Um, possibly they might, but you should be able to get it online somewhere. So um, Ashley's going to do the Halloween party and the Disney after hours this year. Super excited. Two great events. Quick show of hands. And by hands, I mean comments or whatever. What if you had a choice between the two, would you go to Mickey's not so sc pretend I'm buying? Would you rather? And it's not hot. Would you rather go to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, or would you like me to take you to Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party? And if you go in the right time of year, like within three days, you can go to both, but you have to pick one. Not So Scary or Very Merry Christmas. Halloween in August is just wrong, I believe. I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. It's not that it's wrong, but I, I get it. It's Especially for those people who are going back to school in September, this might be the only opportunity that they and their kids have to go and see it. Uh, Karina Rojas says it's not hot. Tony Caggiano says Halloween. Um, <laughs> who says loose buying? I'm going to faint. Uh, I'm a giver. You know that. Uh, we got Christmas, Christmas, not so scary. Christmas, uh, Halloween, without a doubt. Christmas, Halloween. It, it's there. Jenny Wellman Lawson. Which do I prefer? <sighs> Amanda Barter says I haven't been to one so Christmas party. I love... I love them both for different reasons. This is such a cop-out recovering lawyer answer. I love the Halloween party because Halloween is one of my favorite holidays of the year. It's not really because of the candy. I just love getting dressed up and seeing all the costumes and scary movies and trick-or-treating and maybe just a little bit of the candy. I haven't, have a, I haven't been to a I haven't been to a, invited to a Halloween party in ages. I haven't had I keep saying I'm going to have one one year, but it's not going to be this year. Um, but I love the Christmas party because I love the music and I love the snow on Main Street and everybody is so happy and it's a little bit cooler in Walt Disney World and I love the decorations and that parade and I'm not normally a parade guy but I, there's something about that parade that just warms my heart and having hot chocolate as you watch the parade go by. However, I also like the grave diggers and some of the floats in the Halloween party. Um, I'm torn. I, I'm torn between them both. So... Both is going to be my answer, and I'm sticking with it. So, uh, Halloween party, more fun with costumes. I agree, Carrie. I, I dig getting dressed up. Uh, I don't know what, if anything, I'm going to wear on Friday. I don't have a lot of time to prepare something. And did I mention how hot it was? It was 96 degrees today. Just FYI, if you don't, if you aren't paying attention at home. Matt Shane from MSK Digital Media Christmas party. The parade is awesome. I agree. Halloween is the best parade. Great. Halloween has the best parade music, but the Very Merry Christmas Parade, when those soldiers come by, I get weepy, man. I have no problem saying that. But I will go live on Friday from the parade and bring it to you live. So 
Grab some of last year's Halloween candy now on sale at Walgreens and join me Friday night for the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and Parade festivities. There you go. Uh, Andrew likes Christmas because it's my birthday and he doesn't want to get gypped out on two gifts. Um, let's see. I'll choose Halloween party in 60 degree weather and Christmas party in 45 degree weather. You are asking for a Christmas miracle, my friend. We don't get many of those days during either of those months. Christmas lights. I know, Carrot, it's, it's super hard to choose between the two. But I do like all of the spooky stuff around Halloween, too. I love scary movies. I like getting, normally by myself, getting on the couch with my hoodie. I have my, like, I have, like, a 20, literally, like, a 25-year-old hoodie that is, I think that's what I want to be. I'm not, I can't keep going back to my funeral. I love that hoodie so much. My hoodie, my blankie, and, like, popcorn and scary movies, that's a good night right there. Uh, Halloween party is great people watching. I love to do the lawyer thing and say both. That's part of the reason why we bond. Uh, let me see. Is Space Mountain overlay this year or something like that? I don't believe Space Mountain in Walt Disney World is getting an overlay. Obviously, they get Ghost Galaxy for Halloween in um, Disneyland. Oh, my gosh. I want to be there for it. For our adventures by Disney, I, I don't know when I'm going. October f- f- something, like the week after Momentum, um, I'm going to the Adventures by Disney. So looking forward to Ghost Galaxy and, oh, my God, all the snacks. All the Disneyland snacks. Um, Jeremy says, you're going to love my Halloween costume this year. I won't say what it is, but I can see there was part of my top ten list about extinct things around Walt Disney World. I am so incredibly intrigued. Interesting. By the way, speaking of Momentum Weekend Workshop, I think we're now down, I think there's three spots left, maybe four seats left. Uh, I'm going to have a full speaker announcement probably next week, um, hopefully next week. I'm juggling way too many things at the same time. Um, but if you are interested, uh, I just go to lumangelo.com or shoot me an email if you have any questions. Uh, Karina, I agree with you about the Toy Soldiers. Kyle Ann Fauser, wait, Kyle Ann Fauser Verheller. I'm going to call you Kyle because it's a lot easier. Um, everybody, just Matt Shane, everybody's just loving the the toy sh- the toy soldiers. Um, I agree. That is my favorite, favorite part of that parade. Although I do like the smell of hot chocolate when one of the, the floats does go, go by. So... Um, Let's see. There's a Halloween party on Friday. Katie McNamara, the only thing that's nutty about the Halloween party being this Friday is that I'm going to it. So uh, if there's some way, even just, it doesn't have to be cool. Just give me like a little breeze at night, something, so I'm not sweating like a crazy person because I'm always sweating like a crazy person. Jesse McCullough, good to see you as well. Martin Shrugold, I agree with you about the Booty You Parade, which I will bring to you Friday night. So Get some coffee or some Earl Grey tea and stay up late, and I will I will share the parade on Friday if I can find my get back to my favorite spot. So uh, Christmas, actually, it does. Despite what people think, it actually does get cold in Florida. Oh, it does get cold in Florida. Um, usually January, February, but it is. Um, you did do get a couple of nights in December where I I have a fire pit outside. My hand to God, I'm lighting that thing up this year. I don't care. I, I don't even think I lit it at all um, last year, except maybe like one night. So um, let's see. When is the meetup in Pennsylvania? That is going to be. So it's going to be Sunday, August 26th. Um, wait, I know the name of the place now, and I can't remember what it's called. It's something like the Pickle Chef, the Chef <laughs> I'm going to completely get this wrong because I haven't upgraded. I haven't updated the somebody, a friend of mine is, is helping to coordinate this. So wait a minute. It's called the, I have to update it. It's called, (laughs) this is so embarrassing. Something with pickles. It's called the, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm not getting this. Wait. I think it's called something with pickle. Yes. Wait, it's called, no, not the Branson Pickle. Uh, is the Halloween party something you can go to solo? Absolutely. You can you can most absolutely go because um, you'll always be able to connect and hook up with friends. It's called the Pickled Chef. 
I knew there was pickle in there somewhere. It's called the Pickled Chef. Um, they are supposedly creating a special menu for us that night. They don't just serve pickles. It's a grilled cheese place. So I'm more excited about grilled cheese on the road meetup than I even think I am about speaking. And then the night before, I'm actually going to be in Noblesville, not Nobleton, Noblesville at the 11th annual Indie Disney Meet. From what I understand, Aaron, there's a lot of people coming. There's a lot of people coming. So I am, uh, I'm excited. I'm super excited to meet everybody there. I just hope that something that I ordered is going to be here in time for me to bring with me. So, Stephanie, can't wait to move down here and experience it all. I promise you, Stephanie, and all of those of you who are thinking about it, my moving to Disney show is coming at some point soon. I just have to, like, get it coordinated. I think this weekend I will work on trying to get a date. Have I ever had pickled on grilled cheese? Life-changing. Uh, no, but I think I'll have to. By the way, there's actually a new grilled cheese place not far from Walt Disney World called the what's it called the meltery no that was the place that I came up with what was what's the, I don't know there's a place around here it's delicious it the um they have a oh gosh what's it called I don't know the, it's awesome it's delicious and it's local uh pickles with grilled cheese I guess I, I'll have to all of you all of you with the pickles and grilled cheese I've never I've never done it before so, um, let me see. Uh, Ashley came to hear her making goals to move to West Virginia. Toasted. Thank you. It's toasted. It's not grilled cheeses. Toasted. Uh, John Delancey saw Bloody Mary grilled cheese yesterday, and it looks amazing. Um, down here? Is that somewhere down here? Maybe we need to, like, integrate that into momentum. <gasps> Wait a minute. Maybe I can talk to the folk. Why am I looking over here? I can talk to the folks at the hotel and see if they can do grilled cheeses for lunch one day for Momentum. It, they'll probably charge me $62 for it, which is not much of an exaggeration because the lunch boxes cost about $50 each. So if something is hot, it'll, but it might be worth it. <gasps> Would they let me bring in toasted? Could I actually have it catered? No, they probably won't let me do that. I'll have to figure it out. I'll have to figure it out. So now we're getting some pickles, no pickles, pizza sauce and grilled cheese. Amanda Bowner says no pickles. Fried pickles and cheese sauce. Now you're talking because fried before anything makes it even better. And I have had fried pickles, but not in cheese sauce. Add some bacon to that grilled cheese. Oh, my God. I am so hungry. Kyle. That's all I'm saying. In Northeast Ohio, we have the best grilled cheese place on earth. Melt bar and grilled. If you ever make it here, go there. Um, I don't think I have anything in Ohio, but if we can get a speaking gig up there, I'm down. I'll fly and buy. Pickles and grilled cheese can't eat it. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. So, Melanie Jones, look into my eyes. I'm looking into your eyes. What am I supposed to be seeing? Uh, Maria Raboli, ciao, it is nice to see you. Heather, I have to try. Yeah, so now I think I have to go to Toasted tomorrow and see if I can get them to put pickles on my grilled cheese. If it ain't fried, it ain't food. Korean Rojas, no true words. Well, that's not true because sushi's not always fried. Although, have you ever had soft shell, soft shell crab sushi? It's phenomenal. Called a spider roll. It's so good. Um, Let's see, Maria, oh, Melanie says, Maria, I love the show on Italy with Lou Mangiello. Hey, I think I still have that. There you go. How close is Italy to the real thing? Um, and if you are a, um, if you are a nation uh, member at certain levels, uh, your care package actually tied into the Italy Pavilion, all kinds of Italian snacks. I think I actually went in the red that month because I was so hungry as I was shopping for care package stuff and snacks that I overbought. And between that and the boxes and the shipping, it didn't matter. It was so good. Those little cones with the Nutella on top. Phew, delicious. Delicious. So, uh, Marie, we have to do that again. I'm now standing down the street from me. Wait, 
Uh, I wait. I logged in and I'm now standing in front of my fridge, famished. Hi, I'm Lou Mangello. Don't you know not to listen or watch Hungry? Um, but I still I have more of those cones. I bought extra. Can somebody bring me one of those cones? I just slide it under the door. They're so good. They're little. I have to do a video. That's what I need to do. I'm gonna go. I have to shoot a video. I have to do a couple of videos in Epcot actually, but. Um, they have little tiny cones with um, like hazelnut and it's a couple different flavors. So, so good. So, so good. Um, John Delancey, maybe I'll have to get some and bring them to, um, I'll have to bring them to Momentum. I have to, I'd have to buy a lot. It might be worth it because they're that good. <laughs> I have some, re- I have extra of those. I've got the shortbread cookies with Nutella I've got some of those little candies, and I have extra of something else. I don't know what it is. The cones are, Aaron says, uh, the cones are amazing, but I have to say the coffee is my favorite. And Aaron Van Quill, by the way, oh, you can't see it because the ca- your T-shirt is right there. So your package, as soon as I'm just waiting for your magic band, and then your package is coming in. So uh, let me see. Or listen to one of those, what does it say? One of those restaurant reviews. Never doing that again when I haven't eaten. Melanie Jones, you, come on, you are a veteran of the show. You should know, um, uh, you should know better. Um, I love the shopping episode. Shocked you didn't have a lady on there. Gots to have a girl when talking about shopping. I Listen, I think men are just as good of shoppers and like shopping as much as ladies do. And I think it would have been almost uh, a stereo, too stereotypical if I would have, plus Tim just makes it interesting the way it is. Um, what happens when we you videotape you eating the food, it disappears, no videos, no capes, and no videos. Um, yes. I didn't hear anything other than Nutella. I'm on my way. Uh, if you could stop and get Dunkin' Donuts first, like coffee, that would be perfect. I could use, I am so tired tonight, I could solely use coffee. Um, Aaron and is, you know, do not, whoops, wait, stop it. Don't watch Hungry. Um, Anthony Mole, it was great to see you as well. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, Timmy Foster is not going to be, Timmy Foster is going to be here. Do, wait, I take that back. He's going to be here that week. I'm going to try and see if I can see him and maybe even do a meetup early in the week with Timmy Foster. It's tough because it's right before Momentum. Or... Maybe if we go out um, on Saturday night or Sunday night after the the workshop, we'll uh, see if we can get Timmy Foster to come out and meet up with everybody. So, um, did I mention the dress shop at, at Cherry Tree Lane? You know, I'm not going to answer that question because obviously, if you listen to the show, you would know that answer already. But clearly, WWE Radio has fallen down the list of your favorite shows. So, um, <laughs> so uh, Stuart Sternberg, it is always good to see you, brother, man. I miss your face and your family, brother. And I've seen pictures, speaking of family and, and kids that, that are getting uh, too big too fast. How you and your wife stay so uh, so young is, is incredible to me. So um, let's see. If my wife sends me out to the store for one thing, how many items do I come back with? It's usually a lot. Don't send me to Publix. Top 10 reasons why. <laughs> top, there's a lot of reasons why I shouldn't go to Publix. Top 10 reasons why I shouldn't go to Publix. I will probably forget what I went there for and come back with six to seven bags of other things. Most notably Doritos, cereal, rice cakes, potato chips, pretzels, other crunchy snacks and things to dip the crunchy snacks into. Maybe some hummus and possibly a little fruit. So, um, so I'm a shopper. So, so. Scott was finally at the 24 hour show recap. Cla- Scott, what is that? Like episode 150, 200, somewhere around there? You're going way back, brother. Way back, way, way back. Um, the schedule events for the end of September. So Jenny Morrison, I announced last week our, hold on. I announced our WW Radio e-ticket event 
for September 21st through the 23rd that consists of a number of different events, including, but not limited to, our Walt Disney World Quest. That is going to be on Saturday, September 22nd. And then, of course, the big event, which sold out literally within minutes, was our Twilight at the Tower event. Not just because it is an incredibly special event, but because it's also limited in size um, because of where we have it. And I think it makes the event even more special. If you go to www.radio.com slash eticket2018, there are other things going on. We're going to spend like an afternoon just sort of wandering Magic Kingdom on Friday. Saturday is the Quest and the Tower event that I think they are both sold out. There might be a couple spots left for the Quest. On Sunday, we're going to do... This is going to be a, interesting considering how many people have registered so far. But we're going to try to do a meet of the month, a food and wine walkabout, and then we have an Illuminations dessert party, which is almost sold out. I think there's only about nine or ten spots left for that. I don't have a graphic for that, but it's all at www.com slash eticket2018. So lots of fun stuff going on um, that weekend. So... Uh, if so, I, I'm seeing a couple of people saying that it was uh, already booked up. If you are interested in going to the Twilight at the Tower event that is sold out, shoot me an email or a message. Um, I am taking names for a wait list. Things happen; people have to cancel, etc. So um, definitely let me do. It. Craig Uri, um, UK donut guy. I know exactly who you are because you brought me donuts from the United Kingdom to Disney's Hollywood Studios, and we eight outside the commissary at a corner table like how many years ago was that three four years ago i hope you are doing well that was like one of the nicest gifts because not only was it food and donuts but you took so much effort to bring them over from um the united kingdom so uh chris chapman says to bring back the rumor mill so, Chris, I do talk about rumors sometimes on the show, and I am very clear when I speculate or what is rumored. The difficulty I run into, and I want you to just sort of understand where I'm coming from, is sometimes there are rumors that are floating around. And I'm, if you have a rumor you want to talk about, I'm happy to, to, to discuss it with you guys tonight. But, um, Maria, send me a message because I'm senile and I'll forget. Um, there are sometimes that there are rumors floating around that I might have information about that I obviously cannot and will not share. So it's um, disingenuous of me to pretend to speculate on something when really I know it's true and possibly breach a confidence that somebody gave to me. So I will talk about things, but I'll never share information that I know um, just because I just don't think that's right. And I am not... I will never be the guy that is going to spoil something that hasn't been officially announced yet. Um, there are other places that do that, and that's awesome if that's their thing. But uh, especially if I know something, if I don't, I will we'll spin the rumor mill left and right. Um, but if I do, sometimes I like to just not say too much. Illuminations. There's a reason why we're doing that Illuminations dessert party when we're doing it. You guys understand that, correct? It may or may not be one of the last Illuminations dessert party. That's rumor. That is me speculating. It is me hedging my bets and saying, this might be the last opportunity I get to do an Illuminations dessert party with a group. So let's just have at it. And if not, who cares? We're still going to see Illuminations and have dessert. So um, do I have any idea when the Skyliner gondola system will be complete? So this is one of those things that I have been told in confidence, a, a possible projected date. Um, it's not for me to share when that is. Um, I would love to see it before the end of the year. So how's that? Um, stop trying to listen. I am not trying to hurt you. Terry Sinson Doherty, I'm trying to help you. I need you to get all of your tear, tears out before you get excited for what is to come to possibly replace Illuminations, if in fact it is going to be replaced. It's going to be replaced. If it's going to be replaced, it's going to be replaced. Um, if what I, I hope as an Illuminations fan comes true, 
you are going to um, you're going to be blown away. So there you go. Uh, Amber Bramble says, join the nation first chance at events. Membership does have its privileges, um, and you're right. And, I, and I'm not. You know me. I'm not a hard. I don't like selling and plugging and promoting. But one of the benefits of being a member of the WWE Radio Nation is that you do get early access to events like things like the Tower of Terror, which had pretty much almost sold out. Um, the nation had first crack at it for about 24 hours, and then I think there was only a couple of spots left when it did open. Those last few spots sold out in less than a minute. So for events like this, especially where there are um, a very limited number of tickets, sometimes having that early access definitely plays to your advantage. So... Was there ever a plan for a retro park where all the past rides were given a new life? No, that was rumored years ago, um, along with the Villains Park and some of the other parks. Uh, Disney, I don't ever think, would... um, uh, I I don't think Disney, for a lot of... Look, it it just doesn't make sense. Nostalgics like us wish we could ride Horizons over and over again, but there's no there's no reason to create a park and bring back rides that were built in the seventies and eighties using that technology. Um, it's just not what current guests want and look for. Um, and based on some of the experiences that I know are coming to the Disney parks domestically and internationally, um, I, I w- I, I will say this, and I won't. I won't say specifically what it is, but mark my words. Today is Wednesday, August fifteenth. Something is going to be introduced to a, uh, a a Disney parks attraction first overseas, and then will be brought here. That is literally going to change the game and the the guest experience in a way that it is going to be ab. Absolutely mind blowing. It is literally going to be mind blowing, and I don't have one to show you. But I would hold up your magic band, and if you think that that little piece piece of plastic and digital technology is not is solely just to get you into the park, get you into your room, and help you pay for things, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Um, I do know of something that is coming, and I would love to spill the beans on it. But I will tell you. As they begin to roll this technology out, prepare for jaw-dropping experiences. And I don't mean to be intentionally vague. I cannot say more about that. But we talk about the personalization of your experience in the parks on a level that you have not seen before. And, And I know where it's going. I know where it's going to be rolled out first. Um, I, when it does, it might even, it it might warrant a a trip there. Um, you're not going to see it in Walt Disney World first. You'll see it somewhere else first, but it is going to be, it is going to be one of those pivotal moments in theme park attraction history. That's going to be like, everything else is going to need to follow suit because that's sort of going to be what the expectation level is going to be. So I'll just leave it at that so um give us an example of a few things you can't tell it's funny john i got an email from somebody the other day and and god bless you if you've done this before sometimes people will find the show now and they'll go back and listen back from episode one scott i know you're doing that now just because you're a freak but other people do that because they just find the show and want to go back and listen again and it's funny because i used to talk about rumors and speculation and how they'll point to a specific episode and then say how X amount of time or right now that thing that I was talking about or speculating about came true. Sometimes it was wishful thinking. Sometimes it was uh, rumors. But it's interesting sometimes the gap between when they were being discussed and when they roll out. But uh, when this thing is announced and shown, we'll come back and circle back to this moment um, because it's going to be a technology that you're going to want to see and we'll see in other attractions here in Walt Disney World. Then maybe you'll even see it in time for the big anniversary. You might. You might. So, 
Um, I remember when the Magic Bands were introduced, you speculated there'd be personalized experience with them at some point. Uh, Madison, you're right. We are still just beginning to see the beginning of that. Small World was one. A few of the other cues you're seeing it. Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith is another. Um, you're going to see a little bit more of that as it's not just going to be to test out the technology, but also um, there's an infrastructure that is in place and needs to be sort of load tested to make sure they can scale this to a much bigger level, especially when there's 50,000 guests in Magic Kingdom. So uh, Big Brother is not watching, but Big Brother's working on some really cool stuff. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me catch up here. Uh, so momentum. Um, John says, I went back to episode one. Heard it wasn't a news broadcast. I was explaining what a hashtag was. Oh, my God. I've been doing this a long time, man. I, um, these young new podcasting whippersnappers starting up their new show. I don't remember way back when we were still talking about what a hashtag was. Um, I heard something about Wreck-It Ralph going into where Stitch was in Tomorrowland. Is that news, rumor, something you can't speak on? Maybe it's old news. Um, let's call it, Matt, That's it's two out of three. It's two out of three. Um, it is rumor and something I can't speculate on. Um, if you are a Stitch's Great Escape fan, Congratulations, because um, there's not a lot of you, but um, the Stitch is not long for that space. That that space, and if you go back and listen to my old um, Alien Encounter, I believe I, I did a... Somebody wants to find that, link that up. I did an old DSI about the history of what was in that space from extraterrestrial Alien Encounter to uh, Mission to Mars and Flight to the Moon, Um it's had its share of unique attractions. And I think what you don't realize about that space and that show building is just how big it really is. That being said, if you think that's big, baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. If you haven't seen the guardians of the galaxy building in Epcot center, Oi, it's huge, like massively huge. I don't mean like golden tome wonders of life, big building, huge, or test track huge, I mean the footprint and the vertical and horizontal space that that building is going to take over, holy smokes, man. That is going to be uh, something huge. So, um, Terry Gaff, I have missed you as well, brother. I hope you are doing well. I hope your daughter is doing well. Do restaurants have any hidden menus? And if so, what is my favorite hidden menu item? Paul, they do. Um, a lot of times you'll find those at, at some counter service locations. I did a video. Uh, did I do a video? I did a video. If somebody can link up the video, because it's just me over here trying to do it already. Um, I did a video of the secret menu at, at All Star Movies Resort where you go and you ask for the secret menu. They bring out a big aluminum briefcase and they give you a Viewmaster with, I think, three or four different items. And one of them, and it might sound gross, it's a burger on a cinnamon bun with bacon. So you're combining three of the prime food groups into one. It was actually quite tasty. Um, but there's a video in there somewhere. Somebody can find that or go to Facebook and, and it'll be on my in the Facebook page. So uh, Sam Kelly says, I wish they would have, oh, Sam and Kelly, those are two different people. I wish they would have special savory treats for not so scary Halloween party. I'm a savory guy. I got the body to prove it. I agree with you as well. I'll be curious to see, though, what sort of sweet treats and snacks there are going to be on Friday. Um, I will go live. I'll probably record a show while I'm there as well. So if you were going to be at the Halloween party on Friday, let me know in the in the box or hit me up on Facebook Messenger. would love to say hi and meet up on Friday night. And uh, let me know if you're going in costume and what I should go as because I don't know what it's going to be. All of my costumes are hot. I don't mean hot as in, damn, hot. I mean, like, man, it's hot. So uh, there'll be no Ewok. There'll be no, uh, yeah, none of the stuff that I have. Way, way too much. Uh, how I do need a production team, 
because I'm there's a lot of stuff I'm trying to juggle all at once, and I'm sure I'm forgetting. Oh, wait, speaking of forgetting stuff, thank you. Um, thank you very much, David Potts. It's show 363, the DSI of the extraterrestrial alien encounter. So, Stuart Boyles, don't go yet. I got two quick things I want to I throw your way. Uh, very quickly, uh, there's a sale going on right now at the WWE shirt store at T Public. So if you go to www.radio.com slash shirts, there's an, an up to 30% off. I, um, I think everything in the store is on sale. I think it only goes until Friday. So there's WW Radio shirts, there's Disney shirts, there's Marvel shirts, there's thousands of designs in there to choose from. It, it can be a very fun, yet very, very deep rabbit hole. But, but I also... I want to give you guys something as well. I want to try something new um, this week. And, wait a minute. I have something that I want to give away to you guys. And I wanted to do it a little bit differently than just having it on the the, um, trivia contest on the show. So, we're going to do a little experiment tonight that you guys can help me out with. Because I have some stuff that I want to give away. And I don't think you can buy any of these except for maybe one in the land where they come from toy story land is still the hot literally hot but hot as in popular land in walt disney world and speaking of being hot one of the ways to stay cool is by turning this over the right way this is a woody up oh, sorry there it is it is a woody cooling towel it's a toy story land cooling towel which I don't know if they sell these or not, but you dip it in some cold water and ice, throw it around your neck. It's never been used before, so I don't have cooties um, other than just going on my neck right now. So I've got the the Toy Story Land cooling towel. I also have a Toy Story Land water bottle, which is actually pretty awesome for your uh, hopefully very, very cold ice water. And not available in stores. I really, I almost kept this, but I wanted to share the love and give it away instead. This is a very, I'm a backpack guy. This is a very, very sweet backpack. Um, it is a Toy Story Land backpack. You got all kinds of little pockets and zippers on the side. It's padded in the back. It's got a laptop sleeve inside for your laptop. All kinds of zippers and compartments. I might even throw some stuff in there as well. Maybe I'll throw in the aforementioned pop socket. And why not? I'll throw in one of the WW Radio vinyl stickers now here's the here's the here's the experiment the way to play and the way to win is not via a trivia contest it is not by playing 20 questions it is not by sending me copious amounts of delicious foods in the mail although that might actually help that's not true i have no say in this what i do want you to do is go to www.radio.com slash giveaway. All right, I'm, I want to try, like I said, I'm testing something a little bit new. Uh, if you go to www.radio.com slash giveaway, there you'll find out how you can enter. There's not a lot that you have to do. You can like the page, subscribe to the podcast, um, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, simple stuff like that. You don't need to know or really do anything. And what will a bagel get you? A bagel will get you a lot of hugs. Chef Bob is in the house. Oh, my gosh. You want to talk about my favorite people on the planet. Chef Bob, man, it was good seeing you just in passing uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I have some, I've had something for you for three months that I've been carrying around with me in my car. Uh, I've got to stop. Oh, you know what? I'm coming down on Tuesday to do something else, if you're going to be um, at the boathouse on Tuesday afternoon, let me know. I'll stop. I'll just drop by and drop something off for you. Uh, but if you love the boathouse, and obviously we do, it's because of Chef Bob and Steve Schussler and all the other guys too, and the whole team. But Chef Bob is is the uh, creative madman back in the kitchen. So um, it's good to see you, Bob. What will blueberry cheesecake get me? Anything you want, brother. God, I love that blueberry cheesecake. I had it the other night. So, obviously, 
Um, so, uh, Chef Bob, Lou loves you a lot. Um, yeah, because even when you're not here, I still say uh, nice things about you. So, um, I have to say, Timmy Foster to the boathouse. We um, we did talk about trying to get Timmy there. Uh, Jerry, I am coming to Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Um, let me see. Where is my little logo here? Hold on a second. Uh, I'm coming on Sunday, August 26th. Oh, I just forgot the name again. We have we now have a location. It's called the Pickled Chef, the Pickled Something, the Pickled Place, something with pickles. It's a grilled cheese place. It's called the Pickled Chef. I'll update the um, uh, the Facebook event page. I have to write myself a note. Update <laughs> Facebook event. Okay, Latrobe. Supposedly they're making like a special grilled cheese menu just for us. So, um. We have reservations for 13 at the Boathouse on November 4th because of Lou. Make it 14. I'll see you there. Um, seriously, Chef Bob, you made my severe allergy daughter's meal. She ate her weight in swordfish. We had to roll it out, visit her twice, and rub one trip. Love the Boathouse. That's, um, that's, you know, there's no better endorsement than that. Chef Bob, uh, so Stan Solo says, Chef Bob is one of the nicest guys. He came out right away when we asked for him and got a great picture together. He is like, don't tell him I said this, but he is really like one of the nicest, most genuine guys on the planet. And oh, by the way, that boy can cook. Whew. That boy can cook and he can fish. He's a fishing machine. So Kim Sammons is hemming out there for the first time in October. Uh, tell him Lou sent you. Remember, don't forget to tell them Lou sent you. Wait, you can wait. Where's the shirt thing? Hold on. Uh, oh, I can't find it. I can't find my shirt. There it is. Do I have my Lou sent me? There you go. You can wear your Lou sent me shirt when you um, when you go to the boathouse. So, trying to get my mom to take me to the boathouse on my birthday because of you, Brandon. Tell her that's all you want for your birthday because she'll still get you something anyway. But she'll also take you to the boathouse. Swordfish, can't wait for momentum and like eight meals at the boathouse. John Delancey. Um, yeah, I have to I have to figure out how we can get a big meal in there at, at boathouse. I'll just see Chef, I need a reservation for fifty. Maybe thirty of us will show up. Um but yeah, that should be fun. So yeah, so just very quickly, I am um I'm testing something out new with this um hold on, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, testing something out new with this um, prize package giveaway. I know sometimes when I do the 20 questions, it's hard because, you know, you're going as fast as you can. Only um, I, I see the answers as quickly as they go by. Sometimes for the trivia contests, if you're not a trivia buff or a Disney history nerd like me. So I wanted to give you guys a way to do it that was fun and just sort of um, see how this goes. And let me know what you guys think about this as well. So. And obviously, you know, since day one, um, you know, part of what we talk about in this community is what have I asked every single show for the past 13 years is please help spread the word. That's what this contest is going to do as well. So and I have another contest uh, in my mind that I've been thinking about for a long, long time that maybe I'll see how creative you guys can get and offer a really I have some really good prizes in that prize closet. I have some, uh, anybody collect magic bands? I have some pretty special magic bands in there that I just, I, some of them I put up on eBay. Some of them I still have um, in there. And you guys may, might be interested uh, in those too. So uh, Adam says he's coming from Toronto for the dessert party. Thanks for planning it for us. Oh, good. I'm looking forward to seeing you. And please bring some poutine when you come. I mean, don't bring poutine, but you know what I mean. Because I love Torontonians. Torontoans. I love Canadians and their poutine. So, and she says, enter the giveaway already. So, yeah, all kinds of good stuff. And I promise I have not used, other than just putting on my neck now, I have not used this because that would just be weird and gross. So, uh, Nick Butt says, um, loves magic bands. Ricky says, hey, Lon Smart. I didn't, so I can't say who pops in anymore, but Lon Smart is here. Really? One of the most talented artists. Over at Disney, I'm not sure if you're still in Design Group. I know the names change all the time, but uh, long time no see, man. I hope you're doing well. 
Kim's already made her reservations for Boathouse. Jesse's got his Infinity Gauntlet Magic Band ready for momentum. That's sweet. That's sweet. I have my Infinity Gauntlet, period, just ready for momentum. Uh, Amanda Bounder made a Magic Band garland. Oh, Magic Band chain garland for your Disney Christmas tree next year. You know, you should really share a photo of that over. Where could you share that? Over at DisneyTravelForAll.com or your Disney Travel For All Instagram. Huh? See what I'm doing there? Hooking you up, helping you out. Seriously, go check out Disney Travel For All. I'm going to just plug anybody and everything tonight. Let's have a gathering with Lou for Momentum. Can reserve some space. Oh, hello. Maybe we'll, uh, we might have to do a speaker's dinner again, <laughs> again there uh, this year, Bob, because I think some people want to speak just so they can come to the boathouse because they heard what a great time we had uh, last year. So um, Jerry's bringing a new batch of students to Disney in January. You know, Jerry, I always love uh, doing stuff with the students when you guys come down. So we'll be happy to do it there or at sea, wherever. I'm easy. Um, let's see. Let me see. Stephanie doesn't have a, So Stephanie, I am not a magic band guy. Um, I still keep a card in my pocket. I prefer that than trying to wear. You see, I don't wear like anything. So I don't use a magic band, which is a shame because they have a really cool Spider-Man one, but I would just never wear it. Not that I have any Spider-Man stuff that uh, that I collect. So, But I do have a few um, very, very limited edition special, some grand opening day magic bands from certain events and things that like that. So... Um, I'm going down early for momentum. I'm all in for the boathouse, says uh, says Aaron King. John's got some taco making time. Good night, John Delancey. Story driven business, Delancey.io. Go check him out and tell him Lou sent you because it's good stuff and John's a good guy. So, wait, Lou likes Spider Man? <laughs> Is that new information? Probably not. Probably not. I almost wore a Spider Man shirt tonight, but I'm saving it for Friday just in case I can't. I have a. Somebody sent me. One of those, um, I don't know what they call them. They're like those really like tight muscle shirts. Like it's got all like the Spider-Man like logo stuff on it. I look like a little fat Oompa Loompa wearing spandex. So I just, there's no way that I can wear it unless they, unless they spell, sell like Spanx for men. That's the only way. And I have a Spider-Man onesie, but oy vey, is it hot outside? So, um... Let's see. Let's see. Why can't I find this contest? So is this link not working? If you go to www.radio.com slash giveaway. Again, I'm, I was, hold on. Let me just try this. Slash give away. Does this not work? It should work. Let me just double check. Uh, yes, that link does work. That link does work. So compression shirts. Brandon, that's it. It's a compression shirt. You know who has two thumbs and can't wear compression shirts? That guy. That guy. So, uh, Stephanie hasn't been down in five years. You got to come back. There's so much good stuff. Come back from one of the parties, like the Halloween party or the Christmas party. Treat yourself. Life is too short. Life is too, too short. So, uh, am I not going to dress up as the guy from Dunkin' Donuts? From the 80s commercial, Time to Make the Donut. So you're saying that I share the same roly-poly physique as the guy with the big fluffy mustache, like a little squirrel under his nose? That guy? I guess I could. I wonder if Duncan Owens would just let me borrow, like, an apron. So, uh, Christopher had his first meal at the boat a couple days ago. Kids' meals come in a cardboard empty car. Sometimes I want to order a kid's meal just so I can get the empty car. It's like going to McDonald's, and I used to go to, I used to buy Happy Meals just for the toys. And by used to, I mean relatively recently. So uh, you had to go to Safari and enter the contest. Interesting. Um, <laughs> haven't been home in seven. Uh, we're going to try this year. Twins on the way. Eric, congratulations. Um, the guy for Dunkin' Oats is Fred. Wow, it is. That's right. I forgot about Fred. Good job, Christopher Stank, knowing that it was Fred. They fold down. The kids brought them home. They're neat. And listen, 101 reasons why I love the boathouse. So I had to use Google to access the contest. The Google, the Safari, whatever works. Um, 
Again, for those I saw somebody else say, how do I enter? Lon Smart says, I saw somebody at the studios the other day wearing a WWE radio shirt. Sweet. It wasn't me, I swear. But I love I love seeing that. Uh, and speaking of which, they're on sale up to 30% off. I think, I think T-shirts are $14 until Friday. And again, Disney, Marvel, Star Wars, 80s, retro designs, video games, fantasy stuff. It's all in there. Every single thing at T Public is on sale. Um, but use that link, and that'll take you right to the WW Radio stuff. So if you ask, they'll give you a cardboard empty car. I'm sure they will. I'm sure if I asked Chef Bob, he would give me a cardboard empty car and fill it with um, with the, oh, the seafood towers there. If you like... If you love seafood and really want to treat yourself, I should do like a top 10 show of like, oh, no, because I, I was going to do that for a book. I still might. Well, I won't. You want to treat yourself? Go to um, go to the boathouse. Um, get a seafood tower. You sort of make it with the, oyster, the number of oysters you want, shrimps, lobster, the tuna and avocado. Oh, my God, the tuna and avocado. Is I want to like I want to be buried with it, and the crab and avocado is so good, and the half lobsters and the shrimp are like that big. Oh yeah, yeah. Like treat yourself, and it's it's a it's a work of art. Uh, it is a work of art. I literally, chef. I've gone. Oh God, I just forgot his name. Um, I've gone up and I've hugged him on the way out because he does. He does. It's. Almost so beautiful you don't want to eat it, but it's so beautiful that you want to eat it. Um, I went not the last time, but two times ago when I was there, um, with when when Brandon was there, um, the most beautiful one that I had ever seen. It was absolutely spec- spectacular. So, top ten meals at the boathouse. Um, a, a guest shucker. Uh, <laughs> Louis Ramos says I could use my senior citizen card at McDonald's. I guess I could because I'm getting AARP stuff sent to me left and right. Um, top ten meals at the Boathouse. I, I, all right. So the the coriander seared tuna. If Bob ever brings back, what was that Louisiana inspired dish again that was so good? It was on the specials menu for a few weeks. That was phenomenal. The the um, the award-winning pulled pork sandwich is insane. Truffle fries, the blueberry cheesecake for dessert. Um, I also love the Korean barbecue tacos, the lobster mac and cheese. I have pretty much the whole menu memorized. I'm going down both sides. Um, you've got to get a at least a dozen Lucky Duck oysters, the tuna and avocado appetizer. Um, gosh. The steaks are so good, too. Gosh, the filet is so good. Is that like eight? That's nine? Somewhere around there? I can keep going. Um, pretty much anything that's on the specials menu, like, kills. And it's all so fresh. Um, somebody, somebody, somebody call a Luber and take me to the boathouse because I'm famished. I am famished. Lobster mac and cheese is heavenly. It is heavenly. I, I agree. Uh, Christine, good to see you. Oh, the lobster roll. But Chef Bob, I, you or Brandon told me you don't get it the way that it's on the menu. You, what is it? Manhattan style? New York style? Where it's not with the mayonnaise. It's just like in the butter on the toasted roll. <gasps> Ay, Dios mio, that's so good. So, so good. The steak seasoning is amazing. Everything is amazing. If I ever win the lottery, I'm going to take all – I'm going to rent out the boathouse one night and just take all of you to the boathouse. But I need to win the lottery first, so don't start making plans just yet. Connecticut style. I knew it was something from the Northeast. Um, whatever it was, one of your um, servers or maybe it was Brandon recommended that one of the times I was there <clears throat> for a lunch meeting, and it was phenomenal. The drinks that were at Boathouse were off the hook. Oh, the shrimp and Andouille mac and cheese. That's so good. The, I don't know what sort of magical cheese you guys put in the mac and cheese. But um, best ribeye and lobster tail on property. I'm, gonna, I'm not saying it because Chef is here. It's Boathouse. It's, I think people, 
they hear Boathouse and they think it's all seafood and they forget that it's a Gibson steak restaurant, I'll put that steak up against any other steak on property anywhere. Like, no joke. And I'm not just saying because chef's here. So maybe I need to go, I need to go and do a video of the steak at the Boathouse. I just want a steak so bad. I'm so hungry. The leftover Chinese food that I had tonight just just was not cutting it. So, uh, blueberry lemonade. Oh my god, so much, so much good stuff. So, okay. So, Peter says in New England that's Connecticut style, and the mayonnaise version is called Main style. So there you go, Main style, or I like Connecticut style, and now I want a lobster sh- sandwich. Doesn't anybody want to have a business meeting at the boathouse? One-on-one coaching calls, lumangelo.com slash, there you go. Oh, wait, there you go, lumangelo.com, click on coaching. Meetings at the Boathouse are absolutely, um, you know, we don't have to do it over the phone. So, Stephen Schwartzrock loves the steak at the Boathouse. <laughs> don't do a video of the steak, it'll go away, the curse of Lou Mangiello said. <laughs> the funniest thing just happened, Bill just said, Lou is still talking about food? Come on. Bill, like you've never met me before. That's all I talk about is food. There's just little things that I I touch on in between. So uh, let me see. Amanda Bonner next time. Jason. Yeah. Um, should I do a sit down restaurant in Tokyo Disney? So Alani Fuentes. Um, so I'm trying to think of where if, if I was to do a sit down restaurant in Tokyo Disney, very I would go to Magellan's in Tokyo Disney Sea. But um, there's the counter service restaurants are so good there too. We did more. I would do that, and I would also do um, at the Miracosta Hotel. They have a um, a dim sum lunch or brunch, and they have all of these themed little dumplings. Like there was a a little piggy dumpling, and there was. Um, the Toy Story Alien dumplings. That was one of the loveliest meals I had. Oh, and the Crystal Lotus inside them is amazing. I ate there by myself one night. It was one of the nicest meals I had on that whole trip. I have no problem eating by myself. I Call me a loser if you want. That's fine. I had a lovely meal. Sat there for like two hours and just had the time of my life and didn't have to share my food with nobody. So take that. Um... Even Scott, I mean, if Scott Otis agrees, you know it's got to be true. Magellan's, he's right. The counter service restaurants are amazing. Um, I, just eat your way through Tokyo Disney Sea. That's just the way to do it. It is just the way to do it. So, um, coaching classes on Marla Chan. I will take you under my wing, and we will do a one-on-one coaching session on where to eat in Walt Disney World. Or you can just listen to the past 530 episodes of WWE Radio, and that will be a good primer. <laughs> Aaron also loves eating alone. It's so calming, just you and your hopefully good food. Allison Ramos Miller, who I love to death, by the way, says, You are not a loser if you eat by yourself. You're winning the Disney lottery. You are wise and beautiful beyond your years. That is so true. Winner. Dining lottery. Right there. It's awesome when you can feel the love put into the food you are eating. Ricky, I believe that, man. And I don't even know if Chef is still in here or not. I think that's one of the reasons why I like the Boathouse so much. Because the people truly care. From the servers to the bussers to the chefs. Like, there is love that is in the food that is is, um, prepared and served there. And I love eating it. So are there any restaurants you haven't eaten at at Disney? The only one I have not eaten at, and I think it's still called um, Mangino's at um, Shades of Green. That's the last one that I have to eat at on property. I've eaten everywhere else, obviously. So uh, fourth time to ask. Okay, sorry. Taking my favorite in two weeks, what do I recommend to homecoming? It's very simple. You don't need a menu. When you go to Homecoming, you're going to want to get the deviled eggs, the fried green tomatoes, and the hush puppies as an appetizer. If you're still really hungry, you can also get um, um, the 
oh god the the board with the different cheeses and the meat and it just jumped out of my head um for dinner it's simple you really have two choices in, in my humble opinion you've got either the fried chicken sandwich with that um it's got a little and you can get it on the side it's phenomenal the way they toast the buns and then there's this um s- sweet and spicy like aioli mayonnaise that they put on top or you get the fried chicken platter and then for dessert you get the hummingbird cake and or pecan pie and maybe a little bit of moonshine or a nice cup of coffee and you're done. There, there's no reason to even bother looking anywhere else. And then just go. It's it's not called charcuterie. They call it something else. They call it, It's called something else other than a charcuterie. They call, uh, oh, a Jasper board. That's it. It's called a Jasper board. Thank you. You're welcome. It's called a uh, it's called a Jasper board. Charcuterie, I know, but um, it is called a Jasper board, and it's lovely. And there's a lot of food on there too. And then if you get somebody that like doesn't like some of the cheese or meat, that's more for you too. So it's um, a Jasper board. Yeah, Bob, I wasn't talking about the boathouse. I was. I mean, I wasn't talking about homecoming. I didn't really mean it. I love the boathouse more. Um, and a sweet tea shine. And if you go to homecoming, you could actually buy. It's like a refillable. Mug, I think, and I don't know, it's like $12, $14. It's like a giant adult sippy cup that they can refill with your sweet tea shine. I don't know what the uh, the the dollar cost is for the refills on that. So, um, dear God, I love pecan pie. Amanda Bonner, two years ago for Momentum, we had gone to, on Friday night or whatever, we had gone to, um, a couple of us had gone to... Um, homecoming just for like a a last minute planning dinner and I was too full for the pie and somebody said oh you know it would be nice to have us in the morning with a cup of coffee and those of you who were there know who I'm talking about this woman on the first Monday mastermind day no sorry the the night that night she went back she went we walked to the hotel she went back bought an entire pecan pie brought it back to the hotel and then served it Monday on the Mastermind Day with coffee. (gasps) Sweet, fancy Moses, that was so good. We might have to do that again. We might have to do that again. So, uh, and Chef Bob loves homecoming. So you know, uh, you know, it's got to be good. So, but next time you go to homecoming, homecoming. Next time you go to Boathouse, you tell them Lou sent you. Whether it's the staff at the host station or your server, or ask to see Chef Bob and give him a big hug because he is the. the nicest guy on the planet. So, uh, can you get Scotch egg at Rose and Crown? Yes, you can. Um, I think they still. You might be able to get it both ways. You might be able to get a cold or warm. I think when I was there with Emma, I think we had a warm Scotch egg because I had that like breading. It was so so good. I haven't been there in in ages. Amber Bramble says my the baked Alaska is my next mission at Disney. You better bring a lot of friends. You better bring a lot of friends that like ice cream because that is no joke. That is no joke. We'll get to Boathouse soon. Wait a minute. Wait a second. I'm screenshotting this. I might regret this, but Boathouse has a secret breakfast menu on the weekend? Dude! <laughs> How did you not tell me the boat has a secret breakfast menu. On. That is the best news I have heard in my entire life. Because I've been saying all along, like, look at the smile on my face. If boat has had breakfast, I would never leave. Yahtzee. Um, I have to ask. Sha- well, there you go. I know. Uh, <laughs> I know. By the way, if you're watching this live, don't tell anybody else about that until we had a chance to go see it. Because uh, I want to make sure I can get, get a reservation to do it. A secret breakfast menu on the weekends. What time do you guys open? 11? Somewhere? Something like that? Oh, my gosh. Secret breakfast menu. Secret breakfast menu at the boathouse. That's the best news ever. Happy birthday to me. So, yeah. Guess where to find Lou this weekend? No kidding. No kidding. I am having a moment. I'm a little verklempt. That's... uh. That wow, dreams dreams really do come true at Walt Disney World. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> a 
What kind of fish is Bob holding in this photo? Uh, I don't know. 11 or earlier if you want. What am I doing on Sunday? <laughs> Wait a minute. You think I'm kidding. I'm looking at my calendar. Uh, please let be nothing. Please let be nothing. Yay, it's nothing. Okay, I'll be in touch. So, just so you know, I will, uh, I will be in <laughs> I'll be in. the weekend eat ticket event is now canceled. Loose spending weekends at the boathouse. We should just change the eat ticket event weekend to just all of us going to the boathouse. So ask for Chef Ramos for boathouse breakfast. He, Chef Ramos is a good guy too. You have such a great st- staff there, Bob. Um, I, I met uh, I met some <laughs> cancel all plans for Sunday. No kidding. I'm not eating anything on Saturday. FYI, just just don't even bother having food in the house. I'm saving myself. I'm saving myself. And here come the text message. Are you really going on Sunday? Can I come? Um, I am. I'm speechless and excited. All right, show's over, everybody. I got. I have prepping to do. <laughs> it is definitely the eat ticket, um, Marcus Val. My new address is the boathouse. You can probably just forward my mail there, and, and I will get it um, eventually. So I was just there. Actually, it's funny. I had family in town last week, and... I didn't even get a chance to suggest restaurants. They're like, oh, by the way, we made reservations for Boathouse. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, there you go. So, <laughs> better order more breakfast. So, <laughs> Lynette Young, oh gosh, love you to death, says, just so you can't surprise Lou anymore, hashtag Boathouse Breakfast. That's going to, we're going to get that trending on Twitter this weekend. So, <laughs> now I can die a happy man. That, um, yeah, that makes me happy. I don't even care what they're serving. I just want to go. So, anyway, is it nine o'clock already? How does, and how does an hour and a half go so, so fast? Because we're talking about food the whole time. So, uh, all right, let's just do a quick recap of, um, yeah, just came up with another shirt design. Make that happen, Eric Christians. And I got your email, by the way. I will. I will make that happen. All right, so let's do a quick little recap. Let's talk about some events coming up. Momentum and maybe a trip to the boathouse. Excuse me, is October um, 6th and 7th. You can go to lumangelo.com slash momentum. I am going to be in Noblesville, Indiana. Yikes, it's next Saturday for the Indie Disney Meet. Super excited to be there. Um Figuring, still figuring out what I'm going to talk about. I think I have an idea, but looking forward to hopefully meeting you, some of you guys there. The next day, I'll be speaking at a college in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. We're going to have to do a meetup that night at the Pickled Chef, and I will update the um, the location on the um, the events page. But if you go to the events page, wradio.com, you can find out. Don't forget, we got Japan. Whoops, Japan coming up next year, and a couple other just last little reminders. You can enter our uh, giveaway. Oops, you can enter our giveaway by going to www.radio.com slash giveaway. Spreading the word definitely helps you um, to uh, with more and more entries. And let me know what you guys think of this type of um, contest. Please, 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 if you don't do anything else tonight, if you are not a member of our community and family, go to www.radio.com slash box people. Go to www.radio.com slash community. That is our Facebook group. That is really where the content and contests and conversations happen. And more importantly, I would love for you guys to invite your friends to be one of our friends as well. Thanks to all of you who are part of the WW Radio Nation to find out more, to help support the show, to get monthly rewards and early access to events. Go to www.radionation.com. Again, there are, um, whoops, there are just... There's not a lot of tickets left, but if you're interested in our e-ticket event, go to www.radio.com slash e-ticket 2018. What else am I forgetting? Mm, if I can help you out, you can uh, actually, this is an old picture. Uh, there's now one seat left for the Tuesday Night Mastermind, but if I can help you out, turn whatever that thing is that you love into the thing that you do, visit lumangelo.com. I hate plugging. I'm not a pluggy kind of guy, but... Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're just the the shirts are on sale too. Yoink. Shirts are on sale. I think just until Friday. They don't tell me when they are, but I think they are just in until Friday. Oh, Carrie, you're gonna be in Indy. It, it's gonna take you from coming down here back up to there over to Indy 
for us to finally meet. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, let's see. Amber Bramble says you can win a trip to Disney at the meet. Even better. Even better. So uh, let's see. Anything else? Anything else? Any other questions? Tattoo idea. Hashtag Boathouse Breakfast. Boathouse Breakfast. Boathouse Breakfast. Uh, Lynette Young. Lynette Young. I love and miss you, too. Um, you are one of the very best things to come out of Jersey. There's pork roll, egg, and cheese. There's knishes. There's White Castle and Lynette Young. Not necessarily in that order, but you definitely are in the top five. And considering what you're up against, that's really good company. So I love and miss you. I don't know if you come to Social Media Marketing World or something like that next year or something, but we'd love to uh, we'd love to see you again. So anyway, I would love to see all of you guys next week, but I will be live from Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party on Friday. If you're going to be here or there, let me know. Hit me up on email or messenger and would love to uh, get together, say hi. If you're not going to be there, I will. there's a 99.37% chance that I will be live broadcasting the Not So Scary Halloween Party Boo to You Parade. I almost started singing the song and then I forgot that I was live because uh, I dig that music uh, on Friday night. So definitely stay tuned. And to all of you who are watching live, thank you so very much for joining me tonight if you're watching on the replay please come back every wednesday i love and appreciate every single one of you guys i'm eric i'm not sure what time the parade is i don't know if it's eight or nine o'clock somewhere around there i will try and let you know as soon as i find out so love you guys i appreciate every single one of you i hope that you have a great night if there's everything i can do to help or more importantly say thank you to you please 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 let me know so until next time thanks again everybody Boathouse breakfast. Boathouse has breakfast. Just telling you. Boathouse has breakfast. Love you guys.